this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema here to review Husbands, which was is being released by the Criterion Collection on May 26, 2020 to Blu-ray for the first time. Uh, Husbands is the fourth uh, feature by Cassavetes uh, and is uh, ironically produced by a studio, uh, Columbia Pictures. Uh, it, it's hot off the heels of uh, Cassavetes, who's been anointed the uh, patron saint of uh, American independent cinema, uh, but it, this is his follow-up after 1968's Faces, uh, which was a, a quite a big hit for him, scoring Oscar nods. Um, and Husbands, uh, so he, he kind of had carte blanche to make what he wanted, uh, so he created this uh, film that's a comedy about uh, life and death and friendship and uh, made a very depressing movie about three white suburban men having a midlife crisis, uh, Harry, Archie, and Gus. Uh, and it's the first time that he unites with uh, the people that would regularly collaborate with him, uh, Ben Gazzara and Peter Falk. Uh, and they all three play friends who are united at the funeral of uh, an, an old friend of theirs, Stuart Jackson. Uh, and then uh, they proceed to get drunk after the funeral and then just have a weekend of uh, doing the same thing and avoiding responsibility of returning home to their families and their jobs and take a flight to London and uh, realize uh, even overseas how empty their lives have become. Uh, Husbands is a film that I saw probably about a decade ago and in my mind it didn't rest as uh, one of my favorite Cassavetes films. Uh, and watching it uh, a second time uh, years later I had a, a much warmer response to it and I, I think if you're fans of Cassavetes, you're fans of, uh, you're fans of uh, how well he uses his wife, usually Jenna Rollins, who is in uh, Faces, of course, even the earlier Child is Waiting uh, with Judy Garland, uh, Woman Under the Influence, etc., etc. Uh, and she, she shows up in one scene, it's not even a cameo, because she, she's not even a character in the film. Um, but this, uh, it, it has a very Salinger-esque film, if you uh, feel to it, if you ever read Raise High the Roof Beam Carpenters, uh, it just cr it is able to capture this uh, melancholic discomfort of these men who are basically crawling out of each other's skin. And it, it, it actually doesn't even matter if you remember any of the characters' names because after a while they all kind of blend into uh, one. Uh, it was notoriously uh, ill-received at the time uh, and would have set a trend that uh, that is how most of Cassavetes' films were received upon their initial reception, uh, the exception being Faces, of course, and A Woman Under the Influence. Um, lots of the scenes run on way too long. It filmed for six months uh, and there was an original cut that was very considered very studio friendly which I would have loved to see that was cut by the editor Peter Tanner uh, and Cassavetes was upset with that and recut it himself to uh, have what we have today. Uh, and you even get to see a, a glimpse of uh, his children Nick and Zan Cassavetes in the end who would of course uh, become directors themselves. Um, it, that said, it, it, it is uh, I would not describe this as a comedy, but there are some moments that are definitely unhappy that are born perhaps out of a reaction of just being uncomfortable that they're going on so long, especially uh, like a first sequence where they're getting drunk in a New York bar and criticizing all the, the men and women that are singing there, uh, often very cruelly. Uh, but my favorite scene is probably with Peter Falk and uh, Dolores Del Mar uh, in a casino where he tries to seduce this older woman and she kind of turns the tables on him and becomes very sexually aggressive. Uh, it's a scene that I would describe as uh, priceless. Uh, Criterion's uh, release of the film, of course they have the previous uh, love streams and the uh, five uh, film disc set uh, that I, I definitely recommend buying if you don't have. Uh, but there are a, a bevy of extra features including 2009 audio commentary track from Marshall Fine. Uh, interviews with producer Al Rubin and Jenny Runecker. Um, there's audio recordings of Cassavetes, of course. Uh, there's a tribute uh, to the film, The Story of Husbands. Uh, there's also a segment from the 1970 Dick Cavett show. Uh, it is a film that received a Golden Globe nod for best screenwriting, which, and, and Cassavetes did write the film. It's just, it has the feeling of he filmed what he wrote, but it's really about capturing all the things that go on between what he wrote on the page, uh, which I, I really do think uh, comes across quite brilliantly. Uh, I would give the film four to five stars and uh, 
Criterion's uh, presentation, four out of five as well. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.